What is going on everybody and welcome on back into Call of the Wild where today I'm going to be giving some of you guys some beginner tips. Now the first thing that I'm going to focus on is going to be opening up your map. Now when you load into a map what you will find is that the map is entirely greyed out and the reason for this is because you need to unlock the areas of your map and you do that by going to these areas over here which are called lookout towers. Now they are going to open up a certain amount of the map each and they will uncover things like outpost locations as well as giving you some need zones for animals. Now I'll cover need zones in a little while but the outposts are going to be your quick travel around the map okay so you can go from this one up to here and then you can also jump right across the map over to this outpost over here but of course you do need to unlock them first now a little tip for you guys is that if you have a friend that has already been playing for a little while and has their map fully unlocked ask them to place down a couple of tents outside the outpost you can open them up and it'll save you a hell of a lot of time when we talk about missions in the game they are fun little side quests which are additional to the main hunting of the game and they give you a couple of optional perks there's like little rewards for completing them and stuff but at the end of the day if that isn't your kind of style if you just want to load on in and run around and shoot some stuff well then it's really easy to turn them off in fact when you load up Layton lakes or any map for the first time you'll often get a voiceover that will be the mission system starting but simply to turn that off once you load in you go to system you go to game and then you turn off the tutorial slash hints as well as the mission system and then you don't have to worry about it obviously one of the important parts of hunting is the gun that you use now when you load in i know that by standard if you have no no DLC whatsoever, um, you're going to have the options of Leighton Lakes or Hirschfelden, and you're probably going to get the 243 rifle. Now, I'm pretty sure it has changed since I started playing, but I know that the 243 is still offered. So what you're going to want to go ahead and do is buy yourself as much of the soft point bullets as you like, because the more that you buy, the less frequently you have to reload, which means the more time you can spend hunting. Now to cover the 243 in a little bit more detail, this gun is fit for shooting cl animal classes 2 to 6. Now we have a couple of what I believe are black tails in front of me. And if I just go ahead and very quickly spot this one here, you can see on the right hand side, there is a little animal symbol with a number 4 next to it. So that means that black tails are a class 4. So I actually have the 243 on me here. It's a little bit different to how yours will look, but you can see here that we can go ahead, take the shot, and the animal starts to drop its health down, 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 and then the animal actually goes down. So that is the kind of shot that you are going to want to take. But guys, if you shoot anything that's class one with this gun, you will damage the integrity of the trophy and you will also damage the integrity of the trophy and may even not be able to take an animal down if you shoot anything class five or above. Now I've mentioned two terms there, okay? I've mentioned class and I've also mentioned trophy. Now I'll cover both of those. Starting off with class. Now, every animal has a class that it belongs to. In the game, it ranges right from class 1 being the easiest, right up to class 9 being the most difficult. The higher the class, the more difficult the animal is to take out, which means that you need different guns to take animals out of different classes. Now, the way that you see what your gun is good for is by going to the ammo section here. Now, when you do, if you hover over, let's hover over the 243 polymer tip, okay? So you can see just off to this side right here, it says recommended classes 2 to 6. Now, every single bullet will show you the recommended classes that it can shoot. So you can see here that I have the 1, I have 2 to 6, I have 4 to 8, and then I have 7 to 9. So it means that I can cover every single class of animal right from the easiest up to the hardest in one go um but obviously as you start off you will only have the 243 which means you can only shoot things class 2 to 6 which i do believe are going to be the white tail black tail and coyote on Leighton lakes as well as the roe deer fallow deer red deer and also uh feral pigs on hirschfelden I've been running around here and you will see right next to me that there is a whole bunch of information right here that may look a little bit confusing. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll just give you guys a little bit of a rundown as to what each bit is. So starting off with the thing that's right next to me here, this is your compass, okay? So this is going to be telling you where you are facing. So you know here that I'm facing west. If I turn to my right, I'm facing north. And if I turn right again, I'm now facing east. But you'll see here that there is this little cone right here, okay? This 
green cone that is going to be the wind direction so if i'm facing this way you can see here that the wind is facing this way so if there's any animals this area of the map they are more likely to smell me and they are more likely to hear me which means that they will spook easier so what you want to be doing is going after the animals that are always the opposite direction to the wind it means that they will not smell you and they will not hear you as easily and off to the side of that, we have this number four right here. This shows how many bullets are currently loaded into your gun. And then next to that, we have this one over here where my finger gets cut off. The 409 there, that is how many bullets we have in the backpack in our reserve ammunition. Then moving on further from that, we have this one right here. This is going to be your active skill or perk, but we'll get on skills and perks in just a second where I'll help clear that one up. But then to bring it back over to the middle line here. So this here is your health bar if an animal runs into you or if you take a big fall that will go down then below that this one here displays your heart rate so you can see here as I run around the heart rate is going to start beating and it is going to turn more red now you can again using skills and perks reduce the frequency at which this happens however it will always happen especially if you go ahead and you grab your gun right here and you scope in and you want to stabilize your shot so you can see here my scope is moving up and down if you want to stabilize your shot you hold shift but you'll only you'll see there that i only have a limited amount of time before that heart starts to go crazy and then once it goes red and starts beating like that you'll see that i lose the effect and then the recoil goes back to how it was now the next icon to that which is currently a circle this is your visibility okay so this is going to be showing you how visible you are to the animals now you'll see here as i crouch it decreases as i go prone it decreases even more so this means that i am still visible but not very much and then if we go ahead and get ourselves into the bush over here what you will see is that we then go invisible and then we become fully invisible and i'll explain what that means here so as we stand next to this bush here, we just have a line. That means, okay, the animals aren't going to be alarmed by you. You're not moving around, but they can still see you. And then as we come into this bush, you will see that that line almost completely disappears. And that means, yep, you're basically camouflaged. You are completely invisible to the animals unless they literally come and walk into you. But then next to that one, we do also have that little microphone sound symbol right there. And you will see that as we stop running and we go down, that goes great. As we stop moving, it disappears completely. And as we start to run, it goes red. Now that is just a sound indicator that says, hey, this is how much noise you're making right now. This is how likely you are to spook the animals based on the noise that you are making. Be careful, buddy. And then, of course, like I said, next to that, we have the 150 meter zeroing, which we will go on to now as we talk about skills and perks. Now, I have also done another video on that, which is going to be at the top of the screen right now in the pop-out banner. So if you guys want to go ahead and see my recommended skills and perks run out, then that is where you can find that. However, to quickly cover the basics of them, skills and perks are essentially the game's way of making you have additional help while you hunt. And you gain that by every time you level up, you'll gain a skill or perk point, And you can apply that to whatever you like, depending on the style of hunting that you are going for. Now, when it comes to actually taking a shot on an animal, there's a couple of things that you are going to want to take care to do. As I mentioned, the 243 is only capable of shooting classes 2 to 6 to keep the trophy integrity. Now, in the game, there is a trophy rating for every animal, um, going from bronze right up to diamond. And then, of course, there's two species in the game currently, the white tails, which can be found on this map, and the red deer, which can be found on Hirschfelden, that have a level 10 great one. Now, that is the top of the top, the rarest animal in the game. So when you find an animal, like for example, we have the black tailed deer over here. There's going to be a couple of things that you are going to want to do. The first one is your position of the bullet. Now, the vital organ needs to be hit for you to get a trophy from the animal, which means that you either need to hit the lungs or the heart. So what you're going to want to do is if you can't see a clear shot on the lungs or the heart and also guys this is going to take a little bit of trial and error okay so don't beat yourself up too hard if you don't hit it on the first time. Now one way that you guys will know for sure if the animal has gone down or not will be by coming onto the map here and you can see that as you take an animal down your map starts to fill up with this purple color here. Now this is a scale okay so it starts off on this very dull very pale purple 
the more animals you shoot in a very condensed area, the brighter purple that will become until it goes up to a hot pink color. Now, when it goes up to hot pink, that means that the need zone will be destroyed for that animal and they will not be coming back there for a little while. The way that you get rid of this is simply by shooting in other areas of the map. There are a couple more as well. However, they are the main ones that you will find. And speaking of finding, now some of you guys may say, all right, Andy, I've seen you shoot a couple of animals here, but how do I find them for myself? Well, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. The first one will be the need zones that you are given when you unlock the lookout towers. Now, I think you get four or five different need zones with every lookout tower that you unlock. So that will give you a good indicator and a good start point for where the animals are going to be. However, to add to this around time, it is simply by going around the map with your binoculars out and spotting the animals. Now, as you spot an animal, if it's in an area that you haven't discovered before, it will give you a brand new need zone. Another way that you can find animals is also by hearing animal calls now animals give off two types of calls they give off mating calls and they give off warning calls so if you hear one off to your left the chances are that in that direction you will find the animal that is giving that call off also, the type of call is a good indication as to how close you are to that animal. So, for example, if they give off a mating call, it probably means they aren't too suspicious at the minute. They aren't thinking that you're around there. They aren't too worried about it. But as that changes over to a warning call, it means that they know that you're getting close and they are letting you know that they are there. So that tends to mean that if you start to hear the warning call, you should probably slow it down a little bit, start to move in that little bit slower so that you don't spook the animal off and you can actually get the shot off on the animal and hopefully follow it up with the kill. So as you can see right here, right on cue, you can see there's a black tail mating call. And then if we were to carry on getting in closer, that mating call would probably become a warning call pretty quick. And there you go. So right on cue, this one has now become a warning call. So the black tail went from, oh, you know, life is good. Everything's okay to, whoa, hold on a minute. Who's that trying to creep up on me? Now, you may be all happy with Leighton Lakes out here and the 243, but you may be thinking, well, I've been playing for a little while now and I would like to expand a little bit, give myself a couple more options. And that is going to be where the game's DLC come in. There is currently around 25 to 30 DLC available for this game. So there's quite a fair bit that you can pick up. But where I would start off with is with these two DLC right here. It is going to be the Smoking Barrels DLC. And the reason for the Smoking Barrels DLC is because it gives you a M1 Grand Rifle, which is a, se a semi-automatic five round magazine, which is going to be able to take out class four to eight. So that is going to be your great day-to-day -day gun that you can use for the majority of animals because the majority of them do fall within class four to eight. But also I would recommend picking up the Yukon Valley DLC. Now there's two reasons for this. The first one is that you are going to get another reserve that you can go out there and hunt on. And Yukon is an absolutely beautiful map filled with great animals to hunt but also it gives you a brand new rifle to shoot class 7 to 9 animals in which is going to be the 300 now this is an absolute cannon and it takes down pretty much anything you shoot instantly we've spoken a little bit about the animal need zones and what that is going to mean is that if for example you know that there is a diamond animal at that need zone but it's outside of that need zone time what you are going to want to do is reset time now you can do this by going to your nearest output so for me, for example, that is going to be, let's have a look here. So we're down here. The nearest outpost is going to be quite far away, but here it is just over here. So you're going to want to fast travel to your nearest outpost. And then once you get here, you can just go on inside, walk over to the bed and click on rest. Now that allows you to reset time. So say, for example, the animal need zone time is 8.30 till 11.30. All you have to do is go 824 right there. Perfect. That will reset time and it will also give you a little bit more time to make your way back over to that need zone to catch the animals as they come on in. One final thing to mention is that if you guys are wanting to try out other maps, if you're thinking about maybe buying yourself another map DLC and you want to give it a bit of a go first, there is a really fun and easy way that you can do it without having to buy the DLC outright. What you do is you go onto your main menu and then from the menu screen, you go down to the multiplayer section. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to give you a really cool thing that I haven't seen in any other games before. When you go onto multiplayer, 
here, you can click on any reserve. So say, for example, I have currently uh, Leighton Lakes and Hirschfelden, but I, but I want to buy Te Aroa, the New Zealand DLC. All I do is I go onto this one here, and then I can click on any server that I like. And that will load me on in to this map. Now, you can play on any of the maps available in the game, DLC or not, by simply having somebody else in that map that has the DLC. You can basically piggyback off their DLC. I hope that this video has been useful for some of you new players out there, but maybe even some of you guys that have had the game for a little while, maybe there was something in there that you didn't quite know already. But either way, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please do make sure to subscribe to the channel because there is plenty more videos coming out in the next week to give you guys even more information about the game and hunting and also the brand new DLC, which is coming on December 7th. Just going to go ahead and throw it out there. But I will catch you guys in the next video. Until then, once again, thank you for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. Enjoy the hunt out there. Peace.